good morning today we'll start our next poem by emily dickinson that is a light exists in spring so here the poet is trying to portray a certain kind of light that exists only in spring means that is visible only in the spring season and the poem is in five quatrains that is what are quatrains that stanzas of four lines each quarter so the poem is divided in five quatrains and the poem is about some light that is only visible during the spring season so we'll start with the poem a light exists in spring not present on the ear at any other period when march is scarcely here so the speaker here is asserting or asserts that a light exists in spring and this particular light cannot be experienced any other time of the year means this light which is visible which is a sort of a particular light which is experienced during the spring season only not any other time of the year the speaker reports that the, this light does appear when march is scarcely here means when scarcely here means means that when march is about to come or the spring is about to come this claim suggests that the light might also appear just before it is actually spring or just before the spring spring season is about to start spring does not begin until the third week of march or not in late february as the speaker has suggested so this light which is the speaker is talking about is visible only once a year not any other time of the year which is before the starting of the spring season a color stands abroad on solitary fields that science cannot overtake but human nature feels now the poet or the speaker claims that a color stands abroad on solitary fields means there is an extraordinary sort of color which is apparently not been identified in nature by science means this color is so different it's an extraordinary color which is not identified earlier by science however human beings according to this speaker are capable of sensing this color without a name for or a scientific description for it so there is a color which appears on the solitary fields which is not described anywhere by science but the human beings are capable to sense this color which is not described by any science or scientific description the speaker therefore hints that the color of this special light does not exist at all in nature and it perhaps is only visible to the human soul not the mind or even the heart as such lights as rainbows or the aura is visible to the eye means these lights are visible only to the eye or the human soul so our self or our intellect our inner self can feel these lights and can feel these sort of visible aura borealis is visible to the eye so this the lights maybe the poet poet is talking about are the northern lights which can be seen during the spring season in the european countries it waits upon the lawn it shows the furthest tree upon the furthest slope you know it almost speaks to you so it gives an unearthly perhaps a mystical sort of sense to these lights these light and their color may be experienced as it stands upon the lawn means when they are spread over the lawn however the light may also appear in trees that grow very far away 
and may also be gleaned from far away places which are quite distant from the place where the speaker is viewing them so it waits upon the lawn it shows the furthest tree upon the furthest slope you know it almost speaks to you means these lights have something humanly in them they uh, appear as if they are talking to you or they are speaking to you so there is something mystical or unearthly about these lights about the color of these lights when which you experience while standing away from them these lights appear in the trees that grow far away from them and also can be seen gleaming from very distant places where the speaker is maybe viewing them the speaker reports that this strange mystical light feels as if it is almost speaking to you but of course the language would be one that is understood only by the soul the, therefore the speaker is attempting to elicit from her listeners and readers an understanding that would be quite likely impossible to shape into words the speaker is trying or has been carried to an indescribable place within her own soul this light that is capable of waiting upon the lawn but does not instantly pass across the lawn strongly suggests that it is capable of halting time for a short period and maybe possibly to allow the observer to contemplate the nature of its existence means this light has its own self it has some mystical self which has this capability or capacity to hold itself so that we can have a look for a longer period of time and contemplate the nature of its existence then as horizon step or noon's report away without the formula of sound it passes and we stay but the speaker says that time cannot wait long and therefore it passes time cannot stay still it you can no, not hold the time it passes of course we remain that is the speaker remains where she is while the light passes on as because you cannot hold on the time this therefore this special light begin seems to resemble sunlight after it has passed overhead around the noon hour because sun also keeps on moving and the light of the sun passes overhead around the noon hour its leaving is without fanfare although the speaker seems to have expected a sound or some other sign to help her understand the strange feeling that this light has engendered in her a quality of loss affecting our consent content as trade had suddenly encroached upon a sacrament the speaker now asserts that she feels a kind of deep loss a quality of loss means a deep loss it is as if something drastically inappropriate has happened around her affecting our content means around her something drastic has happened she feels as wronged as sacrament means something sacred so she feels as some as wronged as jesus felt upon encountering the money handlers in the temple the law seems as inappropriate as the intrusion of trade upon a sacrament means when a sacred thing is intruded by trade or the religion here you can say that religion which is intrude there is an intrusion of trade or money or greed in the religion so it it is sort of intrusion of something not good that is not good for the sacred things so the poet feels that some there is a sort of loss and something very inappropriate or drastically inappropriate has happened around her as if when jesus was wronged by the money handlers in the temple so this loss seems inappropriate as the there is an intrusion 
by the traders upon something that is very sacred so the speaker here has remained vague throughout the poem about what this lo light looks like but she has made it quite clear how it was made has made her feel what is the feeling after looking at these lights so the speaker is experiencing or gives her own experience viewing this special light and what they have made an how and what impact they have made upon her and how deeply she is moved by viewing on at these lights although she cannot portray the lights physical nature she can suggest the nature of the way the light has influenced her mentally and spiritually thank you